Let's consider another phasor problem. Here we have, this could be a current, five times the sine of omega t, an alternating current, and a different alternating current source of 10 times the sine of omega t plus 60 degrees. And in the last video, we talked in more detail about the meaning of the phase angle. But what we want to do is, what we did in the last video is add these two current sources together. And we could do that. We could graph this out and graph this one out and then try to add the two graphs together. For example, here we have sine omega t and here we have sine omega t plus theta, two different curves. And we could add these curves together point by point. Like if we were here, we would add the value of this point plus the value of that point to give us a value. Here they're the same, then here it'd be this point plus this point to give us our added point and keep doing it all the way along. That'd be one way to add them together, but that would be quite uh, quite a long process. So the better way is what we demonstrated in the previous video by using uh, phasers. And part of what the technique hinges upon is that this frequency here, omega, our angular frequency in radians per second, as we talked about in our previous videos, this is the same for each one. So if we're going to try to represent this in a, in a phasor format, it would have something like this. Here there's no phase angle, so this would just be like this. Magnitude 5 being perfectly horizontal. And then for this representation, magnitude 10 with an angle of 60 degrees. So it'd be something like that. And you can imagine each one of these rotating counterclockwise and their respective circles. So this would be rotating counterclockwise in a circle of radius 5. And this would be rotating counterclockwise in a circle of radius 10. And they'd be going around that, their respective circles with the same angular velocity, omega. And again, as we talked about way back in video 69, omega is measured in terms of radians per second. Now, what we want to do is add these two phasers together. So that's just the same thing as adding vectors together. So let's just call this vector 1. And the vector here that has a magnitude of 10 and makes an angle of 60 degrees, we'll call that vector v2. And we want to add these two vectors together. So v1 plus v2. We want to add them together to get a new vector. And that should be pretty easy to do, because as we hit here, this has no y component, and its x component obviously is 5. So for v3, its x component will equal 5 plus from v2, this x component, it would be 10 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And again, we added vectors together like this uh, back in video 71. But the cosine of 60 degrees is just 1 half, so that's going to be 5. So Vx equals 10. And now for the Vy component, let's just say V3x to be clear about this. For vector 3, its x component is 10. And its y component, this one has no y component. So it's just going to be the y component of V2. And that will be 10.
times the sine of 60 degrees. And the sine of 60 degrees, that is the square root of 3 over 2. And that's approximately 0.866. So multiply that by 10, and it's 8.66. So V3Y, its Y component, is... eight point six six. This is point eight six six times ten gives us eight point six six for VY. So we know there's two components now. We know it's X component and it's Y component. Now what will be the magnitude of it? So the magnitude of V three that will be the square root of this squared, that's 100, plus 8.66 squared, that's very close to 75. So with the square root of 175, that's approximately 13.2. So we know when we add these two vectors together, vector V3, the vector that it forms, has a magnitude of 13.2. But we don't know what angle it makes with the horizontal axis. We know how to find it, though, of course. That angle is the inverse tangent of its y component. That's this. The y component of the vector divided by the x component of the vector, as we've done in all the previous videos. So this is going to be the inverse tangent of 0.866, and that's very close to 41 degrees. We went and looked it up in a table, and it's like 40.9 degrees. So when we add vector v1 and v2 together, we get a new vector. Its magnitude is this, and the angle that it makes with the horizontal axis is 40.9. So magnitude is 13.2, and the angle is 40.9 degrees. So we can sketch this in. We don't need this anymore. Don't need this. Try to unclutter things. Okay, we added these two vectors together. The new one has a magnitude of 13.2 and the angle is 40.9 degrees. So it's going to be something like this. Magnitude 13.2 and this angle here is 40.9 degrees. So what that means is when we add these two sine waves together and again omega the angular velocity is the same for each one when we add them together well, it's the vector representation for it is this. Well, here then, the vector representation for this one is this vector, magnitude 5, no phase angle, it's perfectly horizontal. For this one, it's a vector, magnitude 10, makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. That's its phase angle. Now when we add them together, that's going to be represented by this vector. magnitude 13.2 times the sine of omega t plus 40.9 degrees. So there, we've had
two alternating current sources, we add them together and this is the resultant current source. And it's much easier to do this um, in the, using the uh, phasor diagram than it would be trying to sketch these out similar to this and having to add them together point by point. Since the angular velocities are the same, we can just simply do it with a phasor diagram. So that's it for this problem. We just wanted to give another uh, quick representation of uh, how to use phasors for um, representing the addition of sinusoidal waves because that's how we can add alternating currents together or alternating voltages together. And I think this is uh, video 77 in our electrical series. Um, anyway, the playlist for all the videos is at digital-university.org. In the next video, we're going to talk now about capacitive reactants and inductive reactants.